So I want to let you guys in on a little secret that you may or quite frankly may not be familiar with. Uh, on this channel and on a lot of tech channels, there's a lot of information that needs to be conveyed to the viewer. And in order to, I guess, kind of make sure that I, as a reviewer, don't forget any, any of that information and additionally don't just start rambling about random topics, I use a teleprompter. I write a script beforehand with all the information I want to make sure that I get over to you guys and then I read it. I try to make it look as natural as possible, but these are my words. They just happen to be on a screen in front of me so that I don't forget anything. This is my Vega 64 review. I wrote this last week after doing some testing. It's about three pages long or so, single space. Took me a couple hours to write it. And now I just kind of want to tear it up. Uh, hold on. And now, I just want to tear it up. So, this is Vega 64. It came out about a week ago, and by now I'm sure you guys have been inundated with performance reviews in your YouTube inbox. The review script that I symbolically tore up in the intro contained much of the same information that you've been hearing rumors, speculation, and confirmation of over the past two years. 64 compute units, 8 gigs of HBM2, 12.6 teraflops of compute performance, all of it adding up to a card that, while it doesn't quite match up to the GTX 1080, in most tasks is at least in the same performance category as NVIDIA's mainstream NBOSS. People were ultimately disappointed that we didn't end up getting a 1080 Ti killer, but you have to remember that AMD has been completely absent from the high-end GPU market for years now. Yes, the performance of this card catches up to where Nvidia was about 15 months ago, but in all honesty, the GTX 1080 is still a more powerful card than most users will need even for the next few years. And I think Vega is basically in the same boat. When you factor in that Vega 64 is built around a more advanced memory architecture, has the same PCB and power delivery as the $1,000 Vega Frontier Edition, and plays nice with next-gen APIs like Vulkan and DX12, not to mention that you get access to the enormous catalog of FreeSync monitors, you could pretty easily talk yourself into buying a Vega 64 at $499, the price of this card at launch. There were more expensive versions available like the Silver Shrouded Limited Edition or the Premium Water Cooled version, but if you just wanted to get in on the ground floor, $500 was a reasonable price to ask. Was. Now I don't profess to know exactly what's going on with AMD at the moment, but to catch you all up if you're not familiar with the situation, some information has come to light that the initial price at launch of all Vega products is set to increase by $100 as soon as they come back in stock at all the major online retailers. This is due to the launch window pricing being offset by a rebate that AMD was giving to retailers that has now expired. To be fair, this information has not been confirmed yet by AMD, although myself and many of my colleagues have reached out to them for comment, only to receive an extraordinarily vague response that doesn't really answer any of the questions people seem to be asking. There have now been several sources confirming these exact same details, and the fact that AMD has remained mum on the whole situation looks really bad for them. Now, just like I talked about in my 7740X review from last week, if we take a look at a product in a vacuum and just say, does this product perform well and will it work for me? Vega 64 looks like a solid GPU option. But let's start adding in real world factors. Number one, the power draw on this card is enormous. It's rated at 295 watts TDP and AMD recommends a 750 watt power supply to run it. Now let's put that in perspective. My main test bench where I do the vast majority of my GPU benchmarking is a Z270 motherboard and a 7700K running at five gigahertz. The power supply it's hooked up to is only 650 watts. I don't have any problems with it and I managed to do my 1080 Ti SLI testing on this test bench without a single issue. I put one Vega 64 on it and could not complete a single run of Rise of the Tomb Raider without a crash. I had to replace the power supply with a 1000 watt Cooler Master unit just to run my benchmarks. 
This means that many people would have to upgrade their power supply just to keep up. So in addition to maybe a higher electric bill, you're also looking at another hundred plus dollars for a premium power supply. Number two, this card runs hot and it is not quiet. Before I started messing with the fan curve, my Vega 64 was sitting between 80 and 83 Celsius under load at stock voltage and stock clock speeds. To alleviate that and to try to prevent it from throttling during testing, I put in a custom fan curve and as with many blower style coolers, jet engine noises greeted my ears. Number three, availability. Yes, you can buy a Radeon pack if you want Vega 64 right now, but that also commits you to an $800 monitor and or some sort of Ryzen 7 bundle. Barring that, Newegg themselves, not a third party retailer, still occasionally puts these cards up for sale, but at a price of $600 to $700. That's 1080 Ti territory. No thank you. Number four, it loses to its main rival. Yes, as I said earlier, performance is close. In real world tasks, you probably won't know the difference if you're not looking at a frame counter. But factually speaking, the GTX 1080 is just a faster card for gaming no matter almost what you're playing. And the big one, number five, is AMD being honest with us. Vega 64 was supposed to be the people's champion, a $500 alternative to Nvidia that AMD fanboys could eat up like candy and the rest of us could see as a real rival to a 1080. But if the actual price turns out to be $600 instead, where does that leave us exactly? It would mean that AMD lied to us, the reviewers, who were told one price and then had the rug pulled out from under us once the initial round of reviews and most of the publicity had ingrained the $500 figure into everybody's minds. It would mean AMD has lied to you, the consumers, who expected to be able to purchase Vega for $500 at the beginning of next month when you saved up enough money. It would also mean that now we have to evaluate Vega 64 in a completely different way. No longer does Vega have to be in the same performance category as a GTX 1080 in order to be valid. Now with water-cooled versions checking in with a cool $800 price tag, they have to take on premium AIB 1080 Ti cards like the Asus Trix and EVGA For The Win 3. It's just not even a video worth making. It would be such a disaster for Vega. I initially was gonna show you guys slides of Vega versus 1080 or Vega versus 1070 like everybody else did. However, I don't think there's much use comparing them now. What I'd like to show you instead is how it performs across different platforms with the flagship CPUs of each represented. I tested Vega on Z270 with a 7700K at 5 gigahertz, X299 with a 7900X at 4.6 gigahertz, X370 with an 1800X at 3.9 gigahertz, and Threadripper with a 1950X at 3.9 gigahertz. Here are the results. Surprisingly, Ryzen 7 came out on top in almost every test. This is pretty rare, as the 7700K has been the gaming king for a long time. 
Maybe AMD technologies just play nice together or Vega has some sort of weird preference for higher core counts. I'm not smart enough to figure that one out, so maybe you guys know and can let me know down below in the comments. But what I can tell you is this, if you have Vega 64 already and you got it at launch for the advertised price, enjoy it. It's a high performing, albeit power hungry and hot graphics card. I hope you have a FreeSync monitor to pair with it because that experience is fantastic. If you don't have Vega 64 yet, don't buy it. Don't go on eBay for one and pay inflated prices. Don't buy from Newegg who is uncharacteristically also price gouging. And don't buy it when it comes back into stock unless the prices are what they were promised to be. Or I guess if you do a lot of 3D modeling or image processing where the compute performance will come into play. It's just not worth it if you just want a game as there are better options out there. So those are my thoughts on Vega 64. What do you guys think? Let me know down there. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.